peace, everybody. It's me, Foxy D. So I'm going to change direction a little bit today. I was going to speak about toxic masculinity and toxic femininity and how it impacts workplace bullying and mobbing. It's an important topic, very rich topic. That's worth discussing. Before I do that, however, I just have a little bit of an observation that I wanted to share with all of you. Okay, so I've been on various message boards and uh, various pages on social media about this phenomenon, workplace bullying and mobbing, trying to get different perspectives, talk to different people, see what they have been through, and uh, just share ideas. The thing that I found really interesting is this. A lot of people will either like posts or lurk. You can see how many people have seen posts. Very few people will actually post about their experiences. So it got me to thinking, and it got me to thinking the following. So I put myself in, you know, back in that place mentally where I was the first time I was mobbed. I felt ashamed. I felt guilt in a very strange way. And I felt like a big loser, quite frankly. I didn't understand what was going on. I took it very personally. It was only after years of having gone through the same thing, whether it be myself, who was a victim of the mobbing, and I hate that word, target of the mobbing, because I don't feel like a victim, like I said, uh, or witnessing other people going through the same ugly phenomenon. Once I came to the realization and understanding of what was going on and how, I guess you could say, part of it is just how human psychology works and how mobbing works. I suggest you also look at the work of Dr. Philip Zimbardo in the Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, he has a book about the nature of evil as well. I forget what the name of it is, but there's some videos out there, especially he did some TED Talks that are really interesting and worth looking at. All right, so he talks about what evil is and how you could choose to either be evil or be a hero. But before you even make that choice, you have to be aware of what's going on. So people tend to follow what's going on in a group, okay? Um, or they don't want attention called to themselves. So oftentimes the target of workplace bullying and mobbing is really left to their own devices to shovel through all the shit, if you will. <laughs> There's a lot of it, okay? And like I said, if you're going through this right now, I'm going to tell you straight up, you have absolutely nothing to feel guilty or ashamed about. And the way I kind of look at it is this, and putting myself back in, into that mindset that I was, or trying to, the initial time I was mobbed. When you walk into a room and you have a whole bunch of faces looking at you funny, or maybe the conversation just stops cold, everybody stops talking because you've walked in, Want you to, and of course, you're going to feel very ugly. I mean, it's just how our animals are made. Fight or flight will kick in. It seems to be a dangerous situation. So kind of like your animal brain will kick in and tell you it's unsafe. But once your frontal, the front part of your brain understands, the executive part, understands what's going on, it's a lot easier to manage. First things first, if you look at all of those individuals who targeted you one by one, think of how you feel about them. Do you have respect for them? Probably not. Probably not because you see that they're not very nice people. Would they be the type of people you want approval from? Uh, no. No, because what does their approval really mean? What do you gain from them? You know who you are. And truth be told, most of the people who are targets of workplace bullying and mobbing are exceptional. They're light and they shine. Now, we live in a strange culture where a lot of people will use victimhood status to try, uh, victimhood status to, try to gain power. Uh, by this, I will give you an example. So, um, you know, we have right and left politically, all right? So a lot of people on the left will, you know, use certain things that are very overt, whether it be gender issues. Today, we hear that all over the place. Terms like, that we never heard before, like, cisgendered, of course, transgendered, non-binary, and all of these terms. So, you know, you'll hear that a lot and people will kind of tout their victim and status. I'm not saying that everybody does this, but a lot of people do. When you are the target of workplace bullying and mobbing, you don't really, you're not afforded that luxury, okay, of using your victimhood as empowerment. 
because when you are the victim of workplace mobbing, you are really jammed in a corner. It's a hellish experience to go through because no one is on your side. Like I said, people who used to be your friends are no longer your friends. People have turned against you. Everything you do is viewed under a microscope. So it's really easy, okay, to get tucked into a corner, feel yourself, like feel that as though you are this victim, but not have that status or empowerment as a victim, okay? Because like I said, HR won't be behind you, uh, management won't be behind you, and you won't really have any friends at work to bounce ideas off of or get support from. But I'm here to tell you again, you're not really a victim. You're an exceptional person. That's why you were targeted to begin with. I hope those of you who are going through this stand tall, okay? Look at all those resources out there. I'm going to be posting some. I don't have permission, unfortunately, from a lot of the authors, but like I said, check out Stanley Milgram's experiments and Philip Zimbardo's experiments. It tells you a little bit about human nature and what you're dealing with. The beauty sometimes of having gone through these experiences and these terrible experiences, you become a much better human being. You really do. You're, you're gonna shine even brighter. I'm sorry to say, it just is what it is. So please hang in there. Don't get discouraged and don't let people that are less than you dictate how you feel about you. Love yourself. You're wonderful. Keep shining. Love you all and we'll talk soon. Okay.